Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about adding employees in EMC. This question comes from one of my YouTube subscribers, so if you have a question about MicroSymphony, please leave it in the comments below or better yet, check out our fantastic Facebook community where you can interact with myself and a thousand other hospitality enthusiasts from all around the world. It's open and free for everyone to join. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. And really quick, I wanted to remind you guys about our online learning platform. You can find training and support for Micro Symphony at simsupport.online. I'll leave a link to it in the description below and a coupon code as a special thank you. And with that, let's get back to the video. Okay, so here we are in EMC. And the first thing I wanna discuss about is the two ways of adding employees into Micro Symphony. Now, there, if you have Symphony Labor turned on and your employees clock in and clock out through the system, that means you'll have to add your employees through the reporting and analytics portal in the labor management section. Today, we're not going to talk about that. Today, we're going to discuss about adding employees specifically in EMC. So if you come here to your system, select the enterprise level and open employee maintenance here in the configuration tab, I'm going to click a quick search and you see all of my employees are in white and they are editable. That means that symbol enable is not enabled. If you come here and all these fields are grayed out, that means that you will have to manage your employees in the reporting and analytics portal. Okay, and with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at our employee maintenance fields. Now, I do have here at the top, I have a couple of templates for my managers, supervisors, bartenders, servers, and all the way down for my super users and support. So depending on which person you want to add, just like with menu items, it's a very good idea to add that particular person within their template section so that you keep your employees organized and you know which level everybody has. So if we're gonna add a new manager, what we're gonna do is we can actually select a manager that already works here, or you can select the manager template, whichever one is easier for you. If you don't have a manager template, find an employee that is a manager and is active, and we're gonna use them as a template since that is the easiest way to do this. Now that we have our template selected, I'm gonna click the insert key, and my task to do is add employee record from template. The employee to copy is Maria, so I'm gonna go to the name, so I'm going to enter my first name, Mike. And then for the check name, you can enter a check name here. You can just say Mike K if you have multiple mics. The ID, I will leave empty as zero because this ID, I'm going to, because I'm going to be a manager, I'm actually going to use a micros card and I will have to add this at the workstation. Now further down, I can take a look at the property that I'm going to be working at. I just have the one property here and the two revenue centers. So I will include both of these. If you have multiple properties in your system, make sure you select the property that you want the employee to be added to. And now that everything is ready, I'm just going to go ahead and click OK and confirm. And now the employee has been added and it's asking me if I want to add another employee. I don't want to add another one right now, but if you have multiple, you can go ahead and answer yes and you can continue to add them. But for now, I'm just going to answer no. And now I see I do have another employee added here. So let me go ahead and open up this employee field and let's take a look at the couple of the information lines. So in the general tab, we have their primary language and we also have a payroll ID. If you do have an external payroll system and you need to adjust their payroll ID, you can enter it here. And then for their ID, like I said, I'm going to leave this blank. I'm not going to add an alternate ID or pin. Now this level will be automatically added. So as a manager, I'm going to be a level five. This is a security feature. You don't have to change this. And there's a couple of information lines. If you need to add anything else, like their social security number or any kind of information here, unless it's needed, don't add it just to add it. Now, if this employee will have EMC access, then we're going to have to give them a login and a password. This same goes if they need to have access to the reporting module. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a username. So the username will just be Mike K. Then I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I can add a one-time password. Now, this password can be anything that you want. This is going to be only until they log in. They're going to change their password first login, so it doesn't have to be their own personal password, but any kind of secure password will work. So I'm going to enter one here, and I'm going to go ahead and accept it. And now the password has been set temporarily. You can also add their email, and this is for their recovery, and also reset security questions. So these are also good to complete. For the locale, if you have multiple, you can select the one that they're going to use. I'm just going to select the US for myself. 
and I'm gonna move on to the role. Now, in the role section, we can see that I have a manager role. So you can use the little ellipsis here if you need to change it. But since we already use the template, the role is already completed correctly. And we also have a zone location. So if I want to select a different area, let's say I have multiple properties and I want this manager card to operate at multiple properties, then I can add multiple roles here. So they can be a manager here or maybe they're just a server at another location. And next to it, we have EMC visibility. Now, if they do have EMC access, they also need to see different EMC fields. So here on my home screen, you can see I can see the enterprise, I can see the property, revenue center, everything like that. And this is because I have visibility over the entire enterprise. So if this particular employee only needs access to the property, you can just select the property or even just a revenue center or a zone. For now, I'm going to leave it as enterprise. And then I'm going to save again and we're going to move on to the next field, which is reporting. Again, this is optional, just like with EMC access. They can still do front of house operations. But if you do want them to have access to the reporting and analytics portal, then we're going to activate their user here. We're going to enter their last name again. And also we're going to go into the user role settings for the user role. I'm going to say this is going to be a store manager. The language, I'm going to leave it as English. For the time zone, I'm going to select Eastern and the org level is going to be my enterprise. And then I can go ahead and save. You can enter any references here if you want to. There's an extra field for you. And next up, we're going to go and select the property itself. So here in the general tab, we can take a look at the employee class. So this employee is a manager and my uh, default revenue center is going to be the restaurant. So if you're adding a bartender, make sure that they have a bartender selected and then they're probably going to have their default revenue center as the bar. And we can go to the job codes. There aren't any here because I don't clock in through the system, but you must check the operator records. So operator records are a way for the employee to work in a particular revenue center. So if you want to limit an employee from working in some of the revenue centers in this property, you can remove their operator records. But if you want the employee to be able to work in all of your revenue centers, then you have to have all of them added here. And you can add more by clicking the insert key if these are not all uh, created. I only have two revenue centers and I cannot add any more. Now, with each one, I can also take a look at some of the option bits that I have. So I do have a cash drawer assigned. If I need to use a cash drawer, you can select either one or two. If you do have zero, then the cash drawer will not work. So make sure you select this one only for managers and for bartenders or whoever is going to use a cash drawer like a cashier. And that's pretty much it. Everything regarding adding an employee. Now that we have an employee added and we have it in the system here, all we need to do it's go and add their employee ID. Now, the way we're going to do this, if you're, they're not going to use a manager code, it's better to have a manager card. If they're going to use a manager code, you can just enter their code here, but people can see it and it's not very secure. But in order to add a manager card, we need to go to the workstation. So here we are at the workstation. I'm going to go ahead and sign in and I want to head to the functions area, specifically to the manager functions section. And I do have a button here called Assign Employee ID. If you don't have this button, you're going to want to add it in Page Design. So what happens basically, if you select this, you will be able to find your employee. So I could just enter the name here, click OK. And I did find my employee number here. All I have to do is click Edit. And with this prompt open, what you're going to want to do is swipe the new employee card on the side of the workstation because that's the way it's going to read the magnetic swipe and enter the information here. It's going to fill up the information, then it's going to automatically close. Then you're good to go. You can go ahead and close out the workstation, click a quick update and the information will be uploaded to the entire enterprise. Wait about five minutes until all of the workstations will read this information and the card will work everywhere. And now that we know how to add an employee in EMC, let's also discuss about removing an employee. So let's say that somebody leaves the company and somebody else comes to take their place as a manager or server, or it doesn't really matter. It's going to be very tempting just to change the name, change the first name and the last name and just give them the old manager card. But this is not a good idea. Just like with menu items, we don't change names. What we have to do is we'll actually have to remove this current employee and we can do that by right clicking and then deleting. There's a permanent delete. Make sure you don't click that 
you just click delete by deleting the employee basically you're removing their entire access but their sales totals are still stored in the system and you can actually add them later on you can just reactivate their employee number if you want to the rest of the process is just how we did it before you can just add the new employee here but if you want to reactivate an old employee what you can do is you can check this box here to view deleted employees and click the search again and you can see there's two deleted employees here and all you have to do is right click and you can do reactivate and then click yes and now we can uncheck the box search again and now we have our employee back so in order to remove them right click delete click yes and with that you're not going to see them in the system anymore and they're not going to have access all of their access gets removed and before we close out this video there were two fields that we talked about when we were adding employees that i want to cover again and that is the roles field and also the employee class field which are very very important and strictly related to employees so for that i'm going to go ahead and close out employee maintenance and the first one i want to take a quick look at is going to be roles so that one is going to be at the enterprise level configuration roles just below employee maintenance here so i'm going to open up my manager role and this is not something that i do daily i usually check on these if i am new to the system or if somebody was in here and made some changes that i'm not aware of it's more of an audit than something that you would necessarily do all the time so i want to take a look at some of these modules so in the emc module section for my manager i can take a look at all of the fields that they can view edit add delete and add override now there is one box here at the top that overrides all these other ones it's basically all fields so if you want this employee to have access to everything in emc to edit add delete override etc you can just check all of the boxes and then they're going to have access to everything but if you only want them to have access to a few of these for example major groups and family groups are not something that we change all the time so they can view this but not necessarily edit or add more there's options here for condiments for print classes for everything else you can go through all of these and kind of take a look at what each manager has access to and if they should or should not have access to it you can just change it as needed in the actions section we can take a look at all of the actions they can perform regarding to the system and this will be mostly regarding distributions creating credit card batches if you are running credit cards through emc and you don't have an external credit card processor viewing employees id viewing deleted employees things like that related to security and also permanently deleting uh, all the employees and this also has kind of an override at the top where the employee can perform all of the actions now most of the option bits related to the front of house is going to be here in the operations section so we have operations regarding timekeeping guest checks printing void returns and these are going to be a lot of option bits if you want to see what each one does you can right click on it and you're going to get a little bit more detail as to what they're authorized to perform and not perform and you will want to go through a bunch of these and see what they're allowed to now for the managers they're probably going to be allowed to do most things but what you will want to check is probably going to be for the servers and bartenders and you want to check the boxes of things that they want to uh, some important ones will be here in the guest checks printing section void return specifically if they are authorized to perform voids most likely not you have here to use the void key to use transaction voids etc and to perform error corrects or not and also you can take a look at reports if they're allowed to run any reports managers will be able to run all of the reports but the servers probably only need their open check report and employee financial if they run any if not you can remove them altogether now you can go through all of these tabs like i said there's a lot of them i'm not going to go through each one because there's too many and finally i'm going to go to the visibility section you can add visibility here you can control it just like we did with the one in each individual employee you can uh, create it per the whole uh, employee role here in the view tab we can enable rvc level security this will prevent the employees from running any operations on revenue centers where they're not assigned and also we have the fields now with the fields is basically kind of like the actions and the emc modules but it's a lot more detailed so for example if we take a look at the menu item definition section you may want them to be able to change some of these so for example 
changing the screen lookup and you could change this to editable but changing something else like a print class override you would not want them to do it so you can change it to view only for example or you can exclude it altogether so they won't even see it for then so this will give you a lot more control and detail as to what they're allowed to change or not change so that's it for the role section like i said you will want to do an audit every now and then especially if you're new at the property and you want to know what your employees are allowed to do and not allowed to do if there's like a void or something here somewhere for like the bartenders they're allowed to void or something like that that can create pretty big issues the final module I wanted to discuss today is employee classes. Now, in order to access them, you will need to select the property level. You won't be able to find them at the enterprise level or RVC. So I'm going to select my property here. And then under the personnel section, I'm going to open up employee classes. And we have a few classes. You don't need to be very, very specific, but I do have manager, bartender, server, and host. If we take a look at one of these, let's take the server as an example. If you do use cash management, you can take a look at this option really quick. If you don't use it, you can go ahead and ignore it. And there's not a lot other options to take a look at in the general tab. We are going to move here to the operator options. And for each revenue center that you have selected, we have different option bits. And the option bits that we select here in the employee classes are items related to Table numbers being required when be uh, beginning or picking up checks, number of guests being required for beginning checks, and everything else like that. Here's where we have the pop-up operator or stay-down operator. This will mean that when an employee sends a check, then they either get kicked off the screen completely or they can stay on the main checks area screen. Another important option is if we want to require the seat entry or not, and if we want to display the op auto pop-up timeout, you can take a look at all of these options, you know, if you want to view blind totals or show, uh, hide them from them and everything else. For example, for a manager, I wouldn't enable all of those option bits because if a manager begins a check, they're probably not going to take a table, so they don't enter table numbers or number of guests or anything like that. So I usually just have a few of these option bits for them. And similarly for a bartender, if they work in the bar, they will probably need to enter the number of guests, but you don't want them to enter table numbers because most of the tab times they just use tabs. They don't really use tables unless you have uh, your bar stools assigned as table numbers. And that's pretty much it for the employee classes section. If you are looking for a written version of this video, and want to remember how to configure your employees in EMC. I do have one on the blog here on our website, and I'll leave a link to this in the description below if you do want to bookmark it and have it as a reference for later on. If you have any questions about adding employees in EMC, go ahead and leave them either in the comments below here, this YouTube video, or go on our website and you can add comments there as well. Or better yet, you can join our fantastic Facebook community that has over a thousand hospitality enthusiasts that can help you out with any of the questions. All the resources are open and free for everyone to join. I'll leave a link to all of them in the description below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to subscribe and also leave this video a big thumbs up. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next one.